Periodic Trends, Atomic and Ionic Radius. In this video, we'll learn the trends for ionic and atomic radius, and we'll also explain those trends. You should be able to answer both what the trends are and why they are what they are. Let's look at atomic radius. We'll start with the vertical trend, since that's the simplest and most intuitive. As you move down the periodic table, you are adding layers of electrons. Each time that you layer on a shell of electrons, those are further away from the nuclei. Additionally, the shielding that we spoke of about in other videos keeps the electrons from being pulled as tightly into the nucleus, since the electrons in the inside shells block those on the outside shells from feeling the nucleus as much. Now let's tackle the horizontal trend. To do this, we need to remember what happens to the effective nuclear charge as we go across the periodic table. The effective nuclear charge increases as we go across the table and to the right. This means that the protons in the nuclei are pulling the electrons closer to the nuclei. Since the size of the atom is pretty much completely determined based on the electrons, if the electrons are pulled in tighter, the atom is smaller. So if we move to the right on the periodic table, the atoms get smaller even though we're adding more electrons because we're also adding more protons. The difference between the horizontal and vertical trend is that in the vertical one, we were adding additional levels of electrons. However, as we go across the periodic table, we're not adding an entire another, an entire another layer, and so there is no shielding. And so therefore, the effective nuclear charge is what changes the size. Let's do a few ranking examples. We'll start by ranking lithium, carbon, and fluorine. These are all along the second row. Since we know that the trend gets smaller as we go to the right, the furthest to the right will be the smallest. This means that F is smaller than carbon, which is smaller than lithium. Now let's take the vertical trend. Here we'll do lithium, potassium, and rubidium. We know that as we go down the periodic table, we add more shells and therefore increase the size of the atom. So the smallest one is going to be the highest on the periodic table or the one with the least number of energy shells. So that's lithium. Then we'll have potassium and then rubidium. Another example of a problem that you could get would be something like barium, selenium, and fluoride. These fall on a diagonal with barium being on the bottom left and fluorine on the top right. Since up and to the right both equal the smallest atomic radii, F must be the smallest, followed by selenium, followed by barium. We can rank these with no other information because the diagonal goes with both trends. Now, what if I asked you for something like beryllium, aluminum, and geranium? Here, the top left is beryllium with germanium being on the bottom right. The trend going down says that GE should be the largest, but the horizontal trend says that BE should be the largest. So which one is it? When we have atoms that follow opposite trends, they're very hard to compare, and honestly, they're typically very similar to each other. So we won't be doing this just by looking at the periodic table. Instead, you could, might be asked to explain why they're all very similar or something of that sort, but you wouldn't be asked to rank them. Now let's look at ions. These are going to be similar, but we also have to consider charge. If we have a positively charged ion, there is an extra proton or multiple extra protons as compared to the number of electrons. So therefore, the proton to electron ratio is higher than one. Because of this, the nucleus is able to hold on to those electrons much tighter in a cation than in a neutral or anion. Therefore, whenever we are comparing cations and anions, the cations will typically be smaller. The more positive, the smaller it is. Our anions, on the other hand, are gonna be larger than average because they are going to have extra electrons compared to the protons. The higher the negative charge, the larger the anion. Now, for example, let's look at these five spheres. 
let's say I tell you that one is O minus, one is O2 minus, as in an oxygen with a minus two charge. One is neutral copper, copper plus, and then copper two plus. Can we match them? Take a minute and try to do this. Once again, it's O minus, O with a negative two charge, neutral copper, copper one plus, and copper two plus. Pause and see if you can do this just based on charges. Let's see if you got it right. First, the three smallest are gonna be copper because those are neutral and positively charged. As we increase the positive charge, it gets smaller. This leaves our two larger atoms, or ions, being O minus and O2 minus because those are anions and therefore the electron density isn't held as close and therefore they are larger. For the most part, when looking at ions, you'll look at the charge first, and then after they've been separated by charge, you can rank them by the same trend as atomic radius. For instance, if we have F minus and Cl minus, both have the same charge, but since Cl is lower on the periodic table, it will be larger. Of course, this may not always be true if they're very far apart on the periodic table, but as a general rule of thumb, that works. Let's do a quick example. So for the species below, draw an arrow from the smallest to largest species in the following isoelectronic species. So I use this as an excuse to introduce a new word too. What does isoelectronic mean? Well, we can break down the word and say iso means same, electronic sounds sort of like an electron, and so isoelectronic means that they all have the same number of electrons. So what I did here is I set up a series of ions where they all have the same number of electrons as argon. And then we just have to rank by atoms, or by charge. So since S2 minus is the largest, calcium two plus will be our smallest and our arrow goes to the left. Let's do some more examples. Rank the following in order from smallest to largest. So we have lithium plus, beryllium two plus, and fluorine minus. They're all on the same row, and therefore they're all going to be relatively close to the same size, and so we can base this purely on charge. Beryllium will have our highest positive charge, making it smallest, while fluorine has our highest negative charge, making it the largest. Let's do another one. Here we have copper one plus, copper two plus, and potassium. Right away we can say that, well, copper two plus will be a lot smaller because it's the highest positive charge. But what about copper one plus and potassium one plus? They both have the same charge. So what we'll do is we'll base it on the periodic trend. We'll come over here and we'll say that copper is right here while potassium is right here. Since copper is furthest to the right where the effective nuclear charge is larger, copper will have the higher effective nuclear charge pulling the electron density in closer, making it smaller than the potassium ion since they have the same charge. So that's an example where you can see how you rank first based on charge and then based on the atomic radius trend. Let's do one more. These all have the same charge. We have chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. Since fluorine is at the top and bromine is at the bottom, fluorine will be our smallest, followed by chlorine and then bromine. Let's do one more example that's visual again. Here I have two compounds and I say that they're made out of sodium plus, magnesium two plus, chlorine minus, and oxygen two minus. What are each of the spheres representing? Since I have the two molecules drawn out, we know that each one only has one compound of each, which means they have to be charge matched. They have to be a plus one minus one compared with a minus two plus two. So we know that we must have magnesium oxide and sodium chloride, but which one's which? 
since O2 minus is the largest negative charge, it will also be the largest, and so it belongs there, leaving the smallest being the one with the plus two charge, or magnesium two plus. Sodium being the next smallest, since it has a plus one charge, and chlorine minus being the next, just smaller than O2 minus. So now we can rank atoms based on their atomic radius and their ions based on their ionic radius. We can also explain why these exist using arguments of effective nuclear charge, penetration, and shielding.